and Monsieur and Madame Caderousse consider their good fortune. We should go get it valued. I'll be sure to do that tomorrow. I'll come with you. It's a while since I got to Marseille. Believe it best if you stay here, wife. Beg pardon? Said it would be better if you stayed here. What was that supposed to mean? Husband! Time to fly away, my little butterfly. Get away from me! Kedros! Get away from me! While at the side of the road, in the depths of that dry and savage night, a man sits, weeping, for all that he has so grievously lost. I'm sorry, I'm, uh, um, I'm not sure I quite caught the name. Lord Wilmore. We've heard this name before. And our business is? Edmund Dantes, imprisoned in the Chateau d'If. And we have met this man before. Disguised first as a corpse, and later as a priest. I'm looking for information. You've dropped some coins, your lordship. Six hundred francs, if I'm not mistaken. Would you say it was enough to gain a glance at an old prison record? Six hundred? The Dante's file would be kept here in the public records office. Uh, Edmund Dante's. It would. It would. Then... Edmund Dante's. Uh, Edmund Dante's. Ah! Uh, here it is. Uh, the, the case file. Ooh, right at the very bottom. It appears the... somebody may have attempted to bury it. It would seem so. Although, you do know that this prisoner tried to escape from the Chateau d'If. I didn't know that. About a year or so ago, quite the scandal it was. Disguised himself as the corpse of an old priest. Oh, heavens! Fazir, or Faria, or some such. The two of them were in cahoots, apparently. They'd even dug some sort of a tunnel between their cells. Desperate measures, eh? Then this Dante's is at large. Hmm? Uh, no, no, sir. Not a chance. Nobody escapes the deef. Dante's was thrown into the sea. Cannonball about his feet. He's dead. Drowned, without a doubt. Would you mind if I took a look at it, uh, the file? Be my guest, your lordship. And are these notes on the arrest papers from um, De Villefort? Uh, that, that, that's the Crown Prosecutor's signature, yes. The notes would have been taken on the night of Dantes' arrest. I see. Is there anything else I can do for you, Lord Wilmore? You've been more than helpful, Monsieur Beville. Thank you. There they are. A little faded, but quite distinguishable. The words Dantes has dreaded for so very long. Regarding Edmund Dante's fanatical Bonapartist plot to return Bonaparte from Elba, solitary confinement in the Chateau d'If, close supervision, N-A-T-B-T. -T. Uh, what do these letters signify? Uh, may I see? No action to be taken. It means the prisoner, Dante's, was considered to be too dangerous to be released. Ever? It would seem so. And the handwriting is... That of de Villefort, the Crown Prosecutor? It's definitely his hand. I've seen that signature a thousand times. And these letters here? Uh, are petitions from one Mercedes Roas, Louis Dantes, the prisoner's father, and Monsieur Morel, the prisoner's employer. Ran the trading firm Morel and Sons down at the old port. Ran? I hear the old man Morel's fallen on hard times. Apparently the company's on the very brink of collapse. Such a fine family, too. A shame, really. Where were we? Let's call our agreed sum a thousand. Your lordship, I don't know what to say. I can, of course, trust upon your discretion. Of course, of course. 
course, absolutely. Lost? The Ferron is lost? Yeah, but the crew survived. I had confirmation from Penelon, the first mate. But the loss of the Ferron must have dire implications for your business, Monsieur Morel. Dire implications. It means we are ruined, sir. Lord Wilmore, face shadowed, eyes narrowed, stares intently at the worried man before him. A man worry has made stooped, nervous. And now you are come to me today with, I'm sure, a final demand for all that we owe your company in Rome, Lord Wilmore. Actually, the contrary. Beg pardon? I am authorised by Messrs. Thompson and French of Rome to extend your credit. It is all here. Extended? I assume that this will help you manage your business for at least three more months. Mm, but your lordship, without a boat... As a resourceful man of business, you have my every confidence. But this is more than we could possibly have hoped for. Yes. Allow me to shake your hand once more, Lord Wilmore. Monsieur Morel, I assure you that this decision is based solely on your solid business performance over the last 40 years. Let us not be sentimental. Uh, indeed not. Then please accept this note of security. I... I don't know what to say. Well, when one discovers oneself to be at a loss for words, it is always good advice, I find, to say nothing. <laughs> we shall meet again on the morning of September the 5th, at which time we shall reassess your financial situation. Is that acceptable? Oh, more than acceptable. Until the fifth. Until then. And now, as old man Morel gathers his wife and daughter to share in his unexpectedly good news, Lord Wilmore walks purposefully towards his handcrafted yacht, exhaustively fitted with every conceivable comfort. Welcome aboard, sir. Thank you, Jacobo. But no sooner is Lord Wilmore aboard, and away from the prying eyes of the always curious Marseillais. Successful meeting, Maltese? Most satisfactory. Then he removes his ostrich feathered hat and ornately laced collar and gently tugs off his soft leather boots, unmistakably revealing. Uh, Jacopo. Edmond Dantes. I need you to listen carefully to me. Yes, sir. There is a man I would like you to find right away. His name is Penelon. Tell him that if he loves the morels, as I know he does, then he's to do all that is asked of him without question. Straight away. And Jacopo. Yes, sir. Discretion. <laughs> Always, Matisse. Father! Father! But three months pass as swift as wasps. Leave me be, Maximilian, please. About spilt honey. I insist that you open this door. Did I not make myself clear? Perfectly. <clears throat> What are you doing? Father? Not another step, Maximilian, and, and, and please don't interfere. The gun is loaded. As is mine. What? I've come to join you, Father. Join me? Let us both die here today, as father and son, in these once proud offices of Morel and Sons. Family honour requires only my blood. Our bankruptcy besmirches us all. I insist I die with you. But who will look after your mother and sister if we both take our lives today? My mind is quite made up. Uh, and who will tell Lord Wilmore our business is collapsed, if not you, Maximilian? Is he coming today? September the 5th. But honour demands... Family honour demands my death, not yours, Max. Thank you, Mother, for, for all that we have been blessed with over the years. Attend to your sister Julie, too. She is your responsibility now. Father! Father! The door, Maximilian. I don't want your sister distressed. Of course. Well, this may not be the best time for, for any... what? You must listen to your brother, Julie. A gun, Father! These are not matters that concern you. Not matters that... Max? Honour demands. Honour demands that you look at this. Is that... A diamond? It is. From where? I don't know, but I received a letter from some person who signed himself as Sinbad. Sinbad? And, according to the letter, it is Sinbad's greatest sorrow to see the once great name of Morel brought low. So for that reason, he wanted me to accept this diamond on your behalf. It is out of the question. Completely out of the question. Who is this Sinbad? From the tone of his letter, I sensed that he was very familiar with our family. But the diamond is not the reason I'm here, father. It isn't? The 
Theron is saved. What? It's coming into port right now. Morell and Sons is saved from ruin, Father. See for yourself. What can this really be? The eyeglass. Uh, uh, fetch me the eyeglass. Here you are. That's Penelope. That's Penelope on the deck. And, and he's waving. Morell and Sons is saved, Max. <laughs> Oh, 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 my, my hat. Where's my hat? We, we must get down there immediately. Put the guns away. Man. Yes, yes, Father. The Lord be praised! But we cannot linger here, my most honoured friends. We cannot watch as the Faron is unloaded and the fortunes of the family are reversed. Nor can we afford to idle away a minute or two, studying the familiar features of the gentleman in the canary yellow cloak, who observes this scene from the shadows of a vintner's doorway, and who brushes away a solitary tear. As he gives the signal, Set a course for Greece, Jacopo. Straight away, Moses. To set sail. The light be there, lads! We sail within the half hour! I don't know what more I can say about him, Maximilian. But he must have told you something about himself. Anything? All I know is that I owe him my life. Of course you recognize our location, my most honored guests. Honestly, Maximilian, he's like some kind of benevolent octopus with an invisible network of tentacles spreading every which way at once. An octopus? And you arranged to rendezvous with him today? Ten o'clock at my apartments on the 21st of May. Yes, we are in Paris, in the fashionably decorated drawing room of one of its most eligible bachelors. <laughs> Do try to look just the tiniest bit interested, Max. Albert de Morcerf. I am. And did we not last see his guest, Maximilian Morel, on a quayside in Marseille some ten long years before? He is. Without doubt, the most extraordinary fellow. For now it is time to speak of the cataclysm. Excuse me, sir. The cataclysm in Paris. Yes, my sir? There is a gentleman at the door, sir. He says he has an appointment with you. Did he give a name? He did, sir. The Count of Monte Cristo. In The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas, adapted by Sebastian Bonchkevich, Edmund Dantes is played by Ian Glenn, Ede by Jean Lapotere, Abbe Faria by Richard Johnson, and Monsieur Morel by Robert Blythe. Dongla is Toby Jones, Fernand Zubin Varla, Cadrus Ben Crow, Mathilde Liza Sadovy, and Jacopo Joe Sims. Captain Patin is played by Patrick Brennan, Albert de Morcerf by Will Howard, Max Morel by Adam Nagaitis, Julie Morel by Eleanor Crooks, and Claude by Paul Stonehouse. The music is by David Tobin and Jeff Megan, and the directors are Jeremy Mortimer and Sasha Yevtushenko. Next Sunday, the Count of Monte Cristo continues his slow revenge as he uncovers the hidden past of de Morcerf. There's another chance to hear the first part this Saturday evening at 9 o'clock, and the serial is available via the Radio 4 website. And to coincide with the broadcast of The Count of Monte Cristo, our book of the week this coming week is Tom Rice's account of the life of Alexandre Dumas' father, General Alex Dumas. The Black Count, Glory, Revolution, Betrayal and the Real Count of Monte Cristo start tomorrow at 9.45 in the morning and again at half past midnight. After the news here on Radio 4, this week's open book is devoted to the joys of children's literature.